Hello and welcome to Symphonic Destruction Tips and Tutorials video number 3. My name is Alejandro and in this episode we will dive deeper into the Symphonic Destruction engine, particularly the Cycle Engine which is a playback tool with granular capabilities which makes it a really powerful tool for rhythm development and sample manipulation. The first thing we're going to do is load an init snapshot and go to the cycle page and make sure that all the parameters are in the initialized position. Next up, we're going to load a sustain source. I chose damage sustain scorch that sounds nice and beefy and solo the channel to focus on one sound for now. Now we're going to engage the cycle engine, which essentially plays back the original source at a speed determined by the rate knob right here. Now I'm going to select a 16th note value to create a more energetic sound out of this source. And because this particular source has a slow attack, we need to use the start knob to select the place in the sample that I want the engine to play back from and get a more aggressive sound. Here you can fine tune the sound by watching the playhead scan through the waveform until you find a sound that you like. Now that we have a big round sound that we can work with, let's add some life to it by tweaking the random knob to add variation to the start time of the sample playback. Notice how a higher value in the random knob makes the playback samples further apart from the selected start time. This creates a really interesting modulating effect, especially when working with sources that change a lot over time. We can tweak the character of the sound further by playing with the attack and release knobs. A faster attack will mean a punchier sound, whereas a slower rate will make the sound more bivy and synthy. With the release settings, you can really alter the mood of your sound from percussive and intimate to washy, frantic and expansive. This is a really cool way to create a pulse to add some rhythm to your tracks or perhaps be the foundation for an action key. To take this concept further, we can load a loop as a source and create a really nice evocative rhythmic bed. To save us some time, I've already set up a second channel and tweaked the cycle engine using these ideas to come up with a cool rhythmic soundscape that can be the bedrock of a cue. So there you go. These are two ways to add a rhythmic dimension to your tracks using the cycle engine. There's a whole lot more to the Symphonic Destruction interface that we'll be covering in future videos, so definitely stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to get the notifications for all the new content. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share. Hope to see you soon again.